Welcome to Hashtag Fish. If you're new to this channel, I'm José Domingos and I'm passionate about marine biology and aquaculture. In this channel, we teach all things about fish and shrimp farming. Now, after much convincing, I managed to bring Dr. Gianna Gomez to help me with Hashtag Fish and talk about the areas she's expert on and has professional practical experience to share. When I met Gianna 15 years ago, she was already practicing veterinary medicine and working for the largest shrimp hatchery in Brazil. I pass you now to the good hands of Gianna to take you through this journey in the first phases of shrimp culture. I believe that most of you, when eating shrimp, don't think about where they come from. Well, you may say, yes, I know, they come from the ocean. Yes, I know, it may be a surprise to you but the majority of the shrimp consumed globally comes from farms. Yes, shrimp aquaculture has surpassed the production of fisheries. So you can be almost certain that shrimp you are buying and eating in restaurants or buying in supermarkets come from farms. But in the shops, you only see the large animals after harvest. Have you ever asked yourself what happens before that? Jose already showed you in previous videos how tiny a shrimp is when it hatches. But how do we grow animals so small until the size of a shrimp we can actually eat? When I started work with shrimp many years ago, I had no idea what it involves and how much work it takes to grow a shrimp until you reach the size of harvest at the farm. In future videos, we will show you what a farm looks like and what involves to farm shrimp. In this video, I'll share with you what happens before the farm. The magic really happens way before at the hatchery. So what is a shrimp hatchery? Hatchery is the place where we grow the tiny shrimp larvae until the post larvae or also called PL when it can be sent to the farm. Hatcheries are important for aquaculture because they supply farms with PLs when they need, independent from the animals breeding season in nature. In the hatchery, we simulate the natural environment of shrimp larvae and try to copy these environmental conditions so the shrimp larvae can grow healthy. By controlling the production system of shrimp larvae, such as water quality, type and quality of feeds, it is possible to predict how many larvae we will produce. This predictability of production is very important for a business point of view. If the hatchery knows how much it can produce, it can plan its sales better. It also helps with its credibility. Farmers will always prefer to buy post larvae from a hatchery they know has a constant supply of good quality animals. Imagine you are a shrimp farmer and you want to buy some post larvae next week. You call a hatchery to order some PLs. Yes, in many countries you order shrimp larvae just like you order any other product. But they tell you that the PLs are only available sometimes and probably only in another three weeks they will have the amount of animals you need. What would you think or do? Just to remind you that not all shrimp farmers have the luxury to grow shrimp all year round. Depending on the geographic location and the weather or the grow out system adopted, there is a limited window of time that farmers can grow shrimp. Shrimp need temperature around 30 degrees Celsius and practically stop growing when temperatures are below 25 degrees. So there is not much point of keeping up with the expenses of maintaining shrimp if a temperature which is below their ideal. Not to say, that in some countries, shrimp production is planned ahead for sales during special occasions, such as Easter, for example, or Christmas. So if the growth of a post larvae to market size takes three to four months, farmers need to have the certainty that they will have the PLs they need at least four or five months before the planned selling period. Can you see now the importance of a hatchery in the shrimp production chain? Another extremely important role of hatchery is that it is there where you can establish the baseline health status of shrimp. Yes, the health of farmed shrimp starts with a healthy post larvae, just like the health of a kid starts when they are babies. And I would go even further to say that, in reality, the health of farmed shrimp starts with the health of the broodstock or the adult shrimp breeders used to produce the post larvae. And that is actually where the hatchery starts. When I started working at Aquatech Hatchery in Brazil, I was fascinated by this part of the hatchery. I was amazed by the size this breeding shrimp could reach. Until then, my experience with shrimp had been pretty much the same as yours. 
in a plate for lunch or dinner. But I was even more fascinated by how complex it is to make sure these animals are on top of their game and actually breed. So basically the hatchery is composed by different departments with a high level of separation between them. That is the water treatment system, for example, the maturation room where shrimp breed and we get the eggs from, the microalgae where we grow the different species of algae to feed the larvae, the larvae culture and a room for packing and shipping the PLs to the farm. It is also very important that the hatchery is located in an area with access to pristine, clean and unpolluted seawater, otherwise all else is at risk. So for this video not to get too long, we will focus on shrimp maturation and egg production. In reality, shrimp kept in captivity do not breed like many other animals if they don't have the best quality of feed, the greatest water quality and minimal stress. So what are the important things that should be considered for breeding shrimp in a hatchery? Firstly, it is very important to let you know that the conditions used to grow shrimp breeders are very important from the ones used to grow shrimp in farms, in which the only purpose is to grow animals to reach market size. Shrimp breeders or broodstock need special conditions. Just like a pregnant woman has special requirements, a broodstock shrimp also has its own needs. If I show you again the life cycle of a shrimp, you can see that in a hatchery, broodstock needs similar conditions to the oceanic water for breeding. The broodstock facility in a shrimp hatchery is called maturation room. One of the first things to consider is the density or the number of animals in a tank. Different from a farm where lots of shrimp are placed in a pond, in a hatchery the number of brood stock in a tank has to be limited. Too many animals in a tank can cause stress and as I mentioned before, stress is a big limiting factor for breeding animals. Another reason to limit the number of animals in a breeding tank is for visualization. These animals need to be monitored closely many times during the day. So having less animals in a tank makes it easier to check how the animals are doing, if their behavior change, if they are eating or not, and so on. The number of animals in a tank is also important because for breeding purpose, we need to have the right proportion between males and females. If the ideal ratio between males and females is not followed, shrimp will not breed. The correct ratio between males and females can be different from hatchery to hatchery and species of shrimp as well, but usually it is one female to one male. Another critical point to successfully breed shrimp is the temperature of the water. Shrimp, just like me, do not like cold environment. The most popular shrimp used in aquaculture are warm water, also known as tropical species, and as such they like warm conditions in their environment. More than that, shrimp like to live in an environment where there is minimal change in temperature. This is even more important for breeding purpose. Shrimp cannot regulate their body temperature like we do, so the temperature of their environment will determine their own body temperature. Having a constant and warm water temperature in breeding facilities can be the difference between a successful spawn or not. As I mentioned before, reducing stress is a critical factor for breeding shrimp, and constant change in water temperature can for sure cause a lot of stress to shrimp. The next two points that need to be considered when breeding shrimp is the amount of light provided to animals and the salinity of the water. The proportion between light and dark is called photoperiod. Having the ideal ratio between light and dark will influence the hormonal activity needed for shrimp breeding. Usually the ratio is around 14 hours of light to 10 hours of dark. The salinity of water is another key factor to be controlled in a hatchery to make sure broodstock can breed. In the natural environment, shrimp breed in oceanic water, so the salinity in breeding tanks need to be the same as in the ocean, which is 35 ppt. But probably the most critical point to be considered when breeding shrimp is the quality of the feed provided to these animals. It is at this point where the quality of the shrimp larvae actually starts. While we women still can have babies even if we are malnourished, this is not the case for animals and for sure not the case for aquaculture species. Female shrimp breeders need a special diet to make sure they have all nutrients needed to develop high quality eggs. Their diet is not rich with the necessary nutrients, females will not mature their eggs or the maturation will be delayed, or even worse, they will produce poor quality eggs. These days, there are many commercial shrimp feeds formulated 
is specific for shrimp breeders. Most of these feeds have been well researched to provide the ideal amount of nutrients needed for breeding shrimp. However, there is still a lot we don't understand about their specific needs, and it is not yet possible to breed shrimp only using commercial broodstock diets. They need to be supplemented with fresh feeds like mussels, squid, polychaetes, also known as bristle worms. In this video, I won't talk about the biosecurity issues of using live feeds to keep the focus on shrimp hatchery and breeding. Biosecurity is a very important aspect of this industry, so we will have a dedicated playlist called Biosecurity, where we will cover this across different production environments, including fish and shrimp hatcheries. The last topic of this video is about a common practice using hatcheries to accelerate the process of maturation of females. It is called eye stalk ablation. In this technique, one of the eye stalk of the female shrimp is removed manually. When performing the eye stalk technique, the optic ganglia connected to the eye is removed and a series of hormonal activities are triggered. Among these triggers, it is the acceleration of egg maturation. As you can imagine, this event is very stressful and can also have a negative impact of female performance and even cause death of some animals. For this reason, only experienced personnel handle these animals to provide the least amount of stress to them. After all, they need to be healthy to produce babies. One positive aspect is that now extensive research has been going on to better understand shrimp breeding and new research demonstrates that successful maturation of females can be achieved without the use of this technique. There are some companies in the Americas which claim to use ablation-free broodstock. And recently, a research from Dr. Simone Zacharias from Scotland has shown that it is possible to be successful in breeding shrimp without the use of ablation. And I love this because it is great for the welfare of animals. In this video, I talk about the origin of shrimp larvae and the role of shrimp hatchery. I show you that the quality of post larvae starts with the broodstock, but that is just the beginning of a long and careful process to produce a healthy and strong PL. We cover here the main topics to be considered in a shrimp hatchery for a successful production, such as density, proportion between male and female, temperature, photo period or light intensity, salinity, feed quality, and finally, eye stalk ablation. Next time, we'll talk about the different steps for the post larvae production. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please subscribe and share this video with people interested in learning more about aquaculture. Thank you and see you next time.